Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Elliot Scribner. I'm a software engineer on the developer advocacy team here at Couchbase. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about building a modern server-side rendering web application using Next.js, GraphQL, and Couchbase. So let's walk through the agenda quickly. First off, I'm going to discuss some of the advantages of using Next.js and Couchbase. Then we'll look briefly at the travel sample data set, which is the data model that we're going to use for our demo app. I'll walk you through some of the back-end and front-end code. And finally, we'll go through the steps to deploy our demo app to Vercel's serverless environment. So Next.js is a super powerful framework built by Vercel, and it's server-side rendered, which improves both performance and SEO. It's highly flexible and super easy to use, and even has built-in tooling to add API routes, allowing you to build not only front-end apps, but also full-stack applications. And because it's made by Vercel, it's super easy to deploy and host with them. It's also open source, which we're always a big fan of here at Couchbase. So why would you use Couchbase with Next.js? Couchbase, much like Next, is highly flexible, allowing you to easily adjust your data model to fit your application's needs as they grow and change. Couchbase also boasts high availability and is consistently performant, ensuring that all your database needs are always met. Couchbase supports several data interaction methods that you can mix and match based on your application's needs. Couchbase allows for simple and fast key value operations on individual components or on individual documents. And for more complex data operations and aggregations, our nickel query language provides powerful querying that'll feel very familiar to those with SQL experience. And when more complex matching is required, Couchbase full text search empowers developers to scan through fields and find data based on a vast array of criteria. Couchbase also makes it super easy to manage your data with an easy to use web UI that allows you to scale and deploy whenever needed. Together, Next.js and Couchbase are a formidable pair. Both are very easy and straightforward to get up and running. Creating a local instance of Couchbase is as easy as running a Docker command, while a Next.js app can be bootstrapped with their Create Next App tool, and we've even built and we've we've even built an application that ships with a Couchbase connection manager, so that you can simply set a few environment variables and start coding straight away. Now let's go over some of the sample data that we'll use today. Travel Sample is an included data set that consists of several document types with various fields. With the release of Couchbase 7, the data can be broken into logical groupings, which we call scopes and collections. Today we'll focus on the inventory scope, and within that, the hotel collection. And we'll also need to add our own scope to hold the booking data that we create. Now let's take a look at the demo application, and we'll start on the back end. So the main functionality we're looking to include in our application is that we want to be able to list all the hotels so that users can choose which ones they'd like to book. And then we want to be able to book a hotel and list all of those bookings so that users can see where they're planning on staying. We want to be able to modify a booking in case a user might need to change the dates of their stay. And finally, we'd also like to be able to cancel a booking. These functionalities encompass create, read, update, and delete operations, all of which are a breeze when using Couchbase and GraphQL. Now, before we go any further, I'll also mention that we've left off individual user sign-on just for simplicity. When it comes to the back end, there's two key files that we'll look at. The first being our pages slash API slash GraphQL file. And this is where we'll set up our GraphQL endpoint and define our schemas and resolvers. And Next.js will actually build an API endpoint for any file that's in this API directory, making spinning up a full stack app super easy. The other file is this utilities slash db.js file. And that's the file where we'll handle all the logic for completing data operations and manipulations on our Couchbase instance. It includes four functions for upserting, reading, deleting, and querying for documents. Now, if we take a look at these files, the first being the GraphQL file, we define our queries and mutations in the schema. And then we also have a couple of uh, document types, such as a hotel and a booking type. And within this, we just define the names of our queries and mutations, what arguments they take, and what their return types are. Within our resolvers, that's where we actually complete the logic for completing these requests. So for a hotel's query, we'd run a nickel query that returns all of the hotels. Similarly, we'll do the same for bookings. 
The same goes for the mutations, except that instead of running queries, we'll use key value operations to create hotel bookings, update hotel bookings, and delete hotel bookings. And then the last part of this file is just some boilerplate Apollo server setup where we create a new server, start it, and then we also write a handler uh, and define our endpoint. The other file that I mentioned is this db.js file. And that's where we have these helper functions that can execute upsert, read, delete, and queries. And all of these rely heavily on this Couchbase connection manager uh, and the connect to database function. So if we go into that file, um, this, is, this is the file that ships with our Next.js uh, example app. And it actually just pulls in a bunch of uh, environment variables, checks them, and then creates cluster bucket and collection objects and returns them to the user. And just to illustrate the GraphQL uh, API that we talked about, um, this is a GraphQL's simple sandbox editor where you can actually see your entire schema. So we can see we have queries, we have a hotel and a bookings query, and the same for mutations. And we can actually you know, select we want to do a hotel query. We've got our ID name and address in there already. If we add the phone number, hit it again, it'll add the phone number to this array of hotels that it returns. So it's a super powerful tool for editing and figuring out the queries you'll actually want to run on your front end. Now, a couple of important notes here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna need to create our own scope called bookings. And within that scope, we'll create a collection and an index so we can query uh, these bookings. And this can easily be done from the Couchbase web UI and more info on this can be found in the Couchbase documentation. I'll just quickly show off the web UI because it's super simple to use. You can see here in my travel sample bucket, I have my inventory uh, scope and all the collections inside of it. And the same goes for bookings. Um, and I created the booking, this booking scope and the hotel collection inside of it. Uh, and this just gives a super straightforward way to visualize your documents um, and you know, go through all and manage, go through all your data and manage uh, everything you need to manage. Some key dependencies that we'll use in our application include Apollo Server Micro, Micro itself, and GraphQL. And we've also used UUID to generate unique identifiers for booking documents. So now that we've covered the back end, let's take a look at how we can add some front end functionality. And just a quick note before we go further, I've used the Semantic UI React library for this project. Semantic provides pre-built components that make developing beautiful user interfaces a breeze. These components are configurable by passing certain props, which we'll see a little bit more of in a few minutes. But first, I'd like to address one of Next.js's most powerful features, and that's the get server side props function. This function allows us to fetch data on the server side and inject it into a page's props so that it's already loaded by the time our page renders in the browser. And we can use it to pre-populate lists of our available hotels and bookings that we've created. The queries and mutations called from this function and from other parts of the app use the Apollo client, which is defined in a separate file and contains an absolute URL to the GraphQL endpoint we'll be working with. So let's take a look at our get server side props function in the index.js file. Um, you'll see here, first at the top, uh, I left, I, I don't actually use this connection manager in the get server side props function. I just left it in here because I wanted to show that you could interact directly with Couchbase if you wanted to. But because we have our GraphQL API, we actually would rather use that to query for the hotels and bookings respectively. Then we inject them into the props and they end up all the way up here in the home component and we can use this to render our app. Now the index page um, is centered around a, a semantic UI tab component, which we can see if we open it up over here. So these tabs, we have one for hotels and one for bookings, and they contain uh, just big old tables with a bunch of rows that are generated by mapping over the data that we fetched in get server side props. Uh, we also use a, Re a React state object to manage the bookings without having to refresh the page once one is added or removed. But this is more of a basic React state thing and nothing specific to Couchbase uh, or Next.js. 
So if we go into our index.js file once more, you can see, like I mentioned, this is our panes array and we pass it into our tab component. You can see inside of the hotels pane, we just create a table, map over all of the hotels, and we do the same for the bookings. It's pretty straightforward. Now, the last piece of the puzzle is the booking modal, and this handles both creating and modifying bookings. And if we pass the modal an existing booking record, it'll render slightly differently and call the modify booking mutation. Otherwise, it'll create a new one. And just again, you'll notice that uh, I've used strings instead of date times, and this is just for simplicity so we don't have to worry about date formatting. So if I go over to my uh, front end app, you can see if I click book now, um, it'll ask me for a check-in and check-out date, and so I can say I want to check in, let's say I want to check in today, and I'm going to check out on Sunday. So if I confirm this booking, it shows up over here, today, and Sunday. And now if I click modify, it's now asking me to update, and that's because we've passed it this existing booking record here, so I can change it. Uh, I'm running a little bit late, so let's say I'm going to check in tomorrow instead. Now that's updated on our app. In the booking modal, in the code, like I mentioned, um, it's just an external component that checks if we have the booking record. Uh, if it doesn't, we create a new booking, otherwise we update the booking. And then there's also just some uh, generic uh, semantic UI React components in here for creating a model and the buttons to handle uh, your data. Now finally, let's take a look at how we can deploy this app to Vercel. The deployment workflow is super straightforward and requires only that the code be hosted in a GitHub repo. We can then point our Vercel app to this repo and it'll pull the files and build the site before it deploys it to their serverless system. And all you need to do is provide a couple of environment variables. So if we jump over to our browser, I'm going to need a new GitHub repo and we'll call this connect demo 2021. Uh, I'm going to make it private for now, but it'll be uh, in a public repository by the time of this conference. If I create the repository and I'll need this URL, this, this line to uh, add the remote, I'm just going to git init uh, inside of my local demo add all the files. Our local demo is working. Now we add our remote and we can push that code. I'm gonna ask for my passphrase and then it should all be available right here. So now that we have everything hosted on GitHub, we can go over to Vercel and just create a new project. And I've already linked my Vercel account with um, GitHub. So it's gonna notice that I just pushed to this Connect Demo 2021 repository. So I can just hit import here. And I'll skip creating a team for now. All it's gonna, all, all I need to add are the environment variables. And those are over here in the .env.local. Um, and I'm just going to basically mirror these with the exception of our Couchbase endpoint can no longer be localhost. So I'm going to point it towards the IP address of a, uh, an AWS hosted Couchbase instance. But everything else is going to be exactly the same as the credentials on my uh, cloud, uh, on my cloud uh, hosted database instance are the same. So if we go back over here, we have Couch. Administrator. So the endpoints, the thing I mentioned, I'm going to do differently. I'm just going to copy this public IP address, hit add for that. And the last two are the bucket and is cloud instance. Bucket is travel sample and is cloud. Um, we're going to leave is cloud instance as false. And I know uh, that's a little counterintuitive because this is technically hosted in the cloud. But what I'm referring to here is actually whether or not it's a managed uh, 
Couchbase Cloud or Couchbase Capella instance, not that it's uh, just hosted in the cloud. And this just provides a little bit of information for that connection manager when dealing with managed cloud um, installations. And that's all we need to do to set it up. We just hit deploy and it should fetch all the code from GitHub and build everything before it deploys it. Now, while that's happening, let's just quickly rehash what we've gone over. Um, in our GraphQL endpoint, we have our schema defined with all of our types, our queries and our mutations. And we handle those queries and mutations inside of our resolvers, running queries or doing key value operations as needed to complete those, op those, uh, those operations. And we also just have our boilerplate uh, Apollo server setup and our uh, function handler. Database.js interacts with our Couchbase.js connection manager and it's where we'll execute upserts, reads, deletes, and queries. On the front end side, our index.js page runs a couple of queries and get server side props and injects them so we can pre-populate our tables before it even loads in the browser. And we also have our booking modal that um, handles, handles creating new bookings or updating existing bookings. And now that it's built, we can just click on here and go to the do domain that it gives us. And you'll notice we get a 500 internal server error. And I was kind of expecting this to happen and I'll show you why. Um, like I mentioned, we have our Apollo client file and this is where we define the URI that we use to uh, as our GraphQL endpoint. And obviously from Vercel, localhost 3000 isn't gonna work. So we actually instead want to use slash API slash GraphQL, uh, the endpoint that's hosted by Vercel because everything on this uh, Next.js app is sort of wrapped up in a nice little package. And so it's all deployed to Vercel, not just the front end, which is super convenient. So I'll instead put this URI in, and now we just need to git add, git commit, And I can push that change up. And Vercel should now recognize that I've just pushed new changes to the master branch, which is our production branch, and it's going to start building yet again with those changes. And inside the settings, you can. Uh, can designate what your um, what your production branch would be. Where is it? Git. So in here, right now, by default, my master branch is what's being used as the production branch. But you could add a production branch or a main branch or whichever whichever branch you'd like to use for production. And Vercel will detect changes on this branch and trigger a new build every time. So it's pretty much just built in CI/CD right out of the box, which is super duper uh, convenient. Um, you can also view all of the environment variables that we defined um, just to rehash those. And again, this endpoint is hosted in an EC2 instance on AWS, which uh, just allows me to hit it. You know, localhost won't work from Vercel this well. Now, I think our new deployment should be ready to go. It is. And now when I open it up, give it a refresh you can see that we've got a working app hosted on Vercel in their serverless environment. And when I go over to bookings, we can confirm that we're actually hitting the cloud hosted or the AWS hosted uh, Couchbase instance because this data is slightly different than it was on our local database instance. And that's it. So we've created and deployed a super simple web application using Next.js, GraphQL, and Couchbase. The final code for this project can be found on my GitHub, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I hope everybody learned something from this, and I hope you all consider using Next.js and Couchbase for your next web application. Thank you for listening.